Hello Blender fans! Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on baking the particle system in Blender 2.78. This is kind of a two-in-one tutorial. It serves as a quick baking primer for those who are new to Blender and would like to learn about the baking process. And it also covers the intermediate to advanced topic of baking the particle system from a linked library object. As discussed in the Blender Developer Manifest in item T36382, a link to which I'll place in the description below, baking the particle system from a linked library file can be a bit clunky. This was originally reported as a bug, but the manifest item was closed as being more of a design limitation rather than a bug. But since it hasn't yet been redesigned and is still tripping people up, including myself, I figured I'd do a quick tutorial on it for those who run into the problem or just for those who want to learn more about particle baking in Blender. In our example today, we'll be baking hair. <laughs> Never try this at home because it smells really, really bad. Okay, so now, if we go to our file that has hair in it, I'm going to, um, going to play it. you'll see that it moves very slow. Up here you can see the the hair is deforming as it should be as Centel reaches over to adjust the controls of her spaceship. And when it comes around this side over here you'll see the hair is moving. Now the reason why it's going so slow is because the simulation is actually running right now and Blender is doing all the calculations necessary to get all these gazillion particles over here moving in a, you know, a physically dynamic way. It's capturing all that data. So the thing about baking is you can save all this data to a cache so that when you reopen the file later it will still be there and it won't have to run the simulation every time. Now I'll stop this for now. This Sintel character is linked from this file where she lives. And you'll see in the scene file over here in the particle cache area, we have a little message. I don't know if you can read this over here, but it says linked object baking requires disk cache to be enabled. And if you try to enable it, it's, <laughs> it's grayed out. So it's nice over here that it, it did, tried to cache our, um, our first 89 frames as we ran the simulation, but the cache isn't checked. So let's go back to the beginning here, and let's go into the library file, and this is what you have to do if you're using a linked object. If you're not, then the procedure will be even simpler for you. So over here, all you do is you just check disk cache and you save the file. Now we're not actually doing the simulation in this library file, but you still have to check this checkbox so that when we come over here to the scene file and reopen it, Now you'll see it's still grayed out, 
but because it was checked off in the library file, it's checked off here as well. So now, when we run the simulation, it still goes very slow, just about one frame a second. And over here, you'll see it says zero frames on disk. That's just because, well, it just updated to 1920. It, it will update as Blender finds time to do so, because right now it's doing very CPU-intensive computations, and the simulation is a priority. But once I run this whole thing, and I'll run the whole 180 frames, um, you'll see that this will show all 180 frames have been cached to the disk. So I'll pause the video and come back when it's at 180 frames. Okay, so now we're back, and you'll see a couple of things. Over here, it says 180 frames on disk. And down here, you'll see this red bar has appeared at the bottom from frame 1 to 180, which means all those have been cached. So now, it was playing at one frame per second before. Now when we press play, now you'll see it's up to about six or seven frames a second, and the hair is moving predictably, because all that has been saved. It's not running the simulation now, so that will that hair will now behave predictably, and you can count on it being rendered this way. So now let's stop it and go back to frame one. And we want to select current cache to bake. It's already cached. We hit this, it's going to happen immediately. So now you'll see bake has changed to free bake because all the information was already on disk. So great, let's um, save the file. And reopen it. And what happened? I press play, and now it's running slow again. Additionally, it says zero frames on disk. Well, it did. It just updated to 15, 17, 18, 20. It's recaching everything. This is exactly what was reported here in the Blender Developer Forum. Uh, manifest, rather, at T36382. It is currently closed, currently resolved, but it still appears to most Blender users, like myself, as a bug. And so, they're calling it a design limitation, so next I'm going to show you how to, what the workaround is for this design limitation, in case you've run into this problem. Now, if you're a new user, you're probably not dealing with linked library objects, and so you're not going to run into this problem, but you'll find as you get more advanced in Blender, you're, you're going to have to start using the linked library pretty quickly, and so you're going to need a workaround for this problem. And here it is. So I'm just... <laughs> We're just going to let this um, cache run again. I'll pause the video again. We'll come back when we're up to 180 frames again. See you in a minute. Okay, so we're back again, and I came back just a little early. We're up to um, just about 170, 168 here, because I wanted to point something out, which is watch as it finishes caching these last 12 frames over here. You'll see, I forgot to point this out before, you'll see the, the bar turning red. So I'll hit play again. And so as it finishes caching, 
it turns red. And this will update to 180 as it just did. And now it's running, everything's cached, it's going from one frame uh, per second to six or seven frames per second. So once again, everything's cached on disk. So let's do it now so it really saves our cache. So I'll stop this again, back to the beginning. Current cache to bake. It's immediately baked. File, save. Now, here's the trick. You don't want to close this file. If you do close it by mistake, don't reopen it yet. So what you do is you come over here to the linked library file and just run it for like a frame or two. So there's a couple. You don't want to do more than that. And then just say it'll four frames on disk it captured and then say current cache to bake and it immediately changes to free bake and then save this and what's happening here is we've made blender set a flag telling itself when it reopens that this has been baked and so it won't so it will know to read your cache so if we go back to the scene file and now close it and reopen it I'm just hitting reopen here but it does the same thing hit play you'll see it's reading from the cache and it's reading all 180 frames even though over here it says uh, four frames on disk because that's what we did back in the other file to to kind of trick it I guess it's not a trick because it's not a bug officially but as a way to tell blender to Yes, we want to read from the cache. Now, um, as a failsafe to this, I mean, now we're done. I mean, you're done. You can you can save this um, or not save it. You reopen it, and as long as the there's a word for the um, that flag. Let me look it up. It is called in my notes. Uh, it's called the point cache underscore baked flag that has been set in the library file. And since the library is linked to this file, this file now reads it and it reads from the cache and it reads from the correct cache and all 180 frames even though it says four frames here so you could be all set but you know when you're working with uh, linked libraries and you're, you're always going into the library files making adjustments and you could very easily as you're working quickly uh, you know disable that flag so one thing you can do to keep blender from dumping your cache completely if that should happen and you know this is just 180 frames but just a, what if it were 1800 frames you know so as a fail safe to what we've already talked about one thing you can do is you can go into the folder that has your scene file, which is ship interior from rear through windshield dot blend. Okay, I, I do a separate blend file for every scene just in case I completely screw something up. Okay, this is the blend cache, you know, blend cache 
underscore your file name associated with this scene file. If you're a Windows user, um, right click on this, go down to properties and just make sure it says read only. If you're on Mac or Ubuntu, then I'm sure there's a way to do it there as well, so you'll just have to adjust these instructions accordingly. So I don't know why Windows says at the folder level that it's read-only parentheses applies to files and folders because you'll see if I right-click here, the read-only checkbox is unchecked. So what I do is I, I click the first file, then I scroll down, and I shift-click the last file, and then I right-click, go down to properties, and now you just hit the checkbox next to read only and that will apply read only status to all the files in the folder. And this whole process is something I do when I'm sending the job off to a render farm and that's actually how I discovered this problem. I sent a scene to a render farm and they came back with the price and one of the line items was unbaked particle system. And I said, oh, I baked the particle system. And they said, well, we can't read your cache. And a gun came out, and police showed up. And, I mean, everything turned out okay. I mean, nobody really bled that much. And it all worked out. But, you know, I, I didn't want that to happen again. So I went and I researched this and researched the forum threads and found the answers how to do this. I had a difficult time finding those threads and finding any information on this at all, which is one of the reasons I made this video in case somebody else is doing a search and having the same trouble finding information on it. Um, all the information I found now is in, you know, one concise, hopefully short, <laughs> I haven't edited this yet, but hopefully it'll be a short video and in one place for you. Uh, last week I did a longer video on shape key drivers maybe i'll put um a link in the description for that one as well and it's it's got some interest this is my second one i'm feeling people out to see if this is something that's needed or desired so if you found this helpful and you want to see more like this one shorter quick tips um, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing and leaving a comment in the comment section below. Or if you have a question, put it in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer it. If I don't know the answer, I'll do my best to find it. So uh, thanks a lot. Hope this has been helpful and ciao for now.